G'day, Starlo here. In October 2022, my wife Jo and I crossed Bass Strait aboard the Spirit of Tasmania for a 10-day trip to the Apple Isle. The main reason for our visit was to attend the Great Lake tie-in at Maina on the shores of Great Lake in the rugged central highlands of Tasmania. Of course, as well as the tie-in, Jo and I were also in Tasmania for some fishing. In particular, we wanted to hook up with some members of Trout Guides and Lodges Tasmania, better known as Tagalt. We wanted to experience firsthand what these dedicated folk can offer to angling visitors to Tasmania, whether they're there for their first trip or their 20th. One of these professionals is Nick May, owner of the Highland Fly. Nick has over a quarter of a century of experience in Tasmania and specialises in guiding on the trout waters of the Central Highlands. Joe and I rugged up and joined Nick aboard his Quintrex Hornet for a day on Arthur's Lake. This is one of Tassie's most famous trout waters, but it had some tough years through the 2010s. The good news is it's bouncing back big time now and producing great fishing once again. We began by going ashore to check out some newly flooded margins. Despite a sprinkling of snow mixed with sleet, the frogs were croaking loudly and we had pretty high expectations. But on this particular day, we didn't find any obvious trout hunting in these fertile margins. Had we been there at first or last light, it might have been a different story. But not today. Oh well, it had certainly been worth a look. Climbing back into Nick's Quinney, we headed out into an area known as the Cow Paddock, deployed the drogue and began drifting, casting our flies downwind ahead of the drifting boat. Fishing this way with anything from one to three flies on your long leader is called lock style fly fishing and it's very productive at times. Joe's pretty good at it but on this day I drew first blood on my six weight outfit. He looked like a good fish didn't Yeah I think he's a two pounder. Oh. Yeah oh, well that bodes well. Uh, he, took the, he took the point fly. Good. Yeah, he's all right. Oh, nice jump. We appreciate that, Mr. Fish. Pretty fish. Pretty yeah. He's not quite, not quite as big as I thought he was. Magic. <laughs> Good stuff. Geez, pretty fish, isn't it? They are in here. Yeah, I remember. They always were. They yeah. just, they get that lovely buttery yellow belly, though, I noticed in here. Lovely. All right, we've opened our account. With renewed enthusiasm after seeing me catch that first fish, Joe was concentrating hard on working her flies. One of the tricks to lock style fishing is to experiment with different retrieves until you discover one that's working on the day. A critical part of any retrieve is what's called the hang at the end as you slowly lift your rod and raise that long leader and its flies through the water column. Lots of trout will grab at this point. Then it's just a matter of rolling the leader out and going into a new cast. It's all about maximising efficiency and keeping your flies in the water as long as possible. Many keen lock stylers like to tuck the rod up under their arm and use two hands to manipulate the line, as Joe's demonstrating here. Watch for the strike. Oh, that was one. Missed him. We'll never know if it was the same fish that hit Joe, but a moment later I was on again. What were we saying? I'm not moving the boat. <laughs> <laughs> that was about that was the length of the leader and about ten feet of fly line, just yep. just hanging it out there. Yep. Yep. On the point again. Mm -hmm. Now we might have to put a little bit more shine in your point fly, Joe. Mm. Yeah, maybe we do. Or maybe go brown. Yes, there's just sort of elements of glimmer and shimmer and stuff yeah, yeah. in this, whereas Joe's is black with a with an orange bead. Oh, he's a better fish than the first one. Yeah. It took a little while to wake up. It's not quite not quite as good a condition as the first one, but but that might be a nice donation to your I reckon your that camping might. friends. Yeah, that'll feed the two of them. Yes, and the dog can have the the frame. The frame. <laughs> it's it's a little bit lean that one, isn't it? Well, but we should be expecting them to be lean at this oh, time. Oh, okay. Of the year. 
you know, post-spawning. Mm -hmm. We opted to keep this brownie to give to some friends who were camped back on shore. These Arthur's fish are well known for their tasty flesh and we knew it'd be appreciated. It's funny, I don't know if it's just because I've just caught a fish, but the water looks better now too. <laughs> Yep. And that once again was on a, well, that, as you say, that was on the Well, hang. that was basically on the hang. I'd yeah. just gone into the hang. Yeah. And he ate it just gently, just tug, tug. You need to really concentrate on each cast and retrieve. Get into a rhythm. If it seems like I'm retrieving fairly quickly, remember that the boat is also drifting down onto the flies. Into the hang then lift off and cast again, minimising the number of false casts. Just work with a comfortable length of line for the prevailing conditions. Keep doing this and you will catch fish. Or your mate will. That was close to the boat too. Well, you can see how much fly line's out. <laughs> yeah. Well folded. On the point fly. Yes. Well, that's proved to be the magic fly. Oh, it's oh, a nice fuck, fish. Wrong with that, Joe. Got to put one in the boat yet, though. Oh, <laughs> oh geez, they often fall off about there. Nothing wrong with a bit of gentle stirring to keep your companion on point, I reckon. Note how Joe turns the rod and reel upside down when the leader knots are inside the runners. They go back out much more smoothly this way if the fish suddenly bolts. Away from! I reckon it's the fish of the day. It is the fish of the day. Red spots galore. Really? I think so. Oh, I yeah, think that might be a... Red spot on oh, that's a beauty. Oh, that's a gorgeous fish. That's a very wow. Fish. Yep. Oh, yeah, look at that. That's definitely the fish of the day. That white tip on his dorsal. Mm. Oh, yeah. This one's definitely worthy of a quick photo shoot. A classic Arthur's Lake brownie. Beautiful. Despite the wind and low temperatures, Arthur's is definitely turning on the sort of action it was once so famous for. It's wonderful to see this fishery bouncing back like this and producing beautiful wild brown trout in good numbers again. We were on a bit of a roll now and I figured it was only a matter of time until one of us hooked up again. And sure enough... Yep. Oh, fish of the day! You want to net it for him or...? No? This one was made a little more challenging by the fact that Joe's line had caught on the underside of the boat. <laughs> That's alright. Nick had his hands full. Yeah, uh, I'll, I'll land Steve. Yeah, alright. These fish are full of fight. They're not coming quietly. No. Oh, no, it's not. Oh, it's on the dropper too. Oh, it's a lovely fish. Mm. Oh, it's not as big as I thought it was. I don't think I've beaten you yet. I'll give you that and I'll get Joe's. Yeah. A bit on the dropper fly. This one had eaten my top dropper fly, which was rigged about a metre and a half ahead of the point fly. You're allowed to fish up to three flies at once, but in this wind I was finding two enough of a handful to cast. What a beautiful trout. Another Arthur's classic. So can you pull it there, Too good to catch just once, I reckon, so I put it back for someone else to enjoy. And so it continued for the rest of that wonderful session. Despite the pretty ordinary weather and the strong wind, we ended up having a red letter day with Nick at Arthur's, catching a bunch more wild brown trout of various sizes, each one a perfect specimen of its breed and the product of 160 years of adaptation to Tasmania's unique challenges and climate. They're wonderful fish. Joe and I just love catching them, especially on fly. Oh, he's a little fella. Oh, he's lively though. 
Still pretty fish though. If you'd like to experience the superb trout fishing at Arthur's or any of the many other waters of the Central Highlands and well beyond, I'd strongly recommend getting on to Nick May of the Highland Fly. Nick's the consummate professional who'll not only put you onto the fish but also teach you the tricks of the game to help make you a better angler. He'll happily supply you gear too, but if you're taking your own like we did, I'd recommend five and six weight outfits. We stuck to full floating lines, but some days intermediates, sink tips and sinking lines can all be handy to get down to the fish when they're feeding a bit deeper. Arthur's is a brown trout only water, but make no mistake, there are some gorgeous rainbows in these highland waters too, as we found out. Joe and I were lucky enough to be invited to have a look at the Tasmanian Inland Fisheries Service's Wild Rainbow Trout Management Scheme. Liaweenie Canal is the major spawning stream for trout from Great Lake, and a weir on the canal allows spawn runners to be diverted into these networks of man-made channels. These channels lead to fish traps, where the trout enter through narrow one-way slots. Removable screening at the upstream ends of the traps prevents the trout from continuing on upriver. Brown trout mostly ascend the canal to spawn from April to July and the rainbows follow from September to November. We were there towards the end of the wild rainbow run but there was still plenty of beautiful fish in the traps. Check that out! Fisheries Field Officer Joseph showed us how the trout are counted and monitored in the traps and scooped a few up to explain the external differences between the right females and the males. The females have soft silvery white bellies and smaller mouths as well as an obviously distended vent. They were all beautifully fit, healthy rainbows, averaging close to a kilo apiece, with some larger specimens mixed in as well. By contrast, the males are much darker, with bigger mouths, and are beginning to develop those characteristic hooky jaws. Joe clearly loves his job and has enormous respect for these trout and the valuable fishery that they sustain. After assessment and counting in the traps, these rainbows are allowed to run upstream into a series of natural spawning channels where they successfully spawn on ideal gravel beds. The rainbow fry hatch and grow here in relative safety, away from predation by brown trout and other hunters. Eventually, after being counted as they grow, the fry are allowed to re-enter the canal and eventually return to Great Lake, significantly boosting its stocks. As a result of this scheme, rainbow numbers and sizes are on the increase in Great Lake. In addition, both browns and rainbows from this wild fishery can be transported to other waterways around the state where wild spawning is limited or non-existent. It's a wonderful program and just another great example of anglers' licence fees at work. But all too soon our time in Tasmania came to an end and we found ourselves making our way back to Devonport to board the Spirit of Tasmania and sail north. But the excitement wasn't over because as luck would have it, we were on the first northbound sailing back into the Spirit's new home in Victoria at the port of Geelong. With the ribbon cut, the crowd poured into the new terminal for a look. This is a place that I think Joe and I will be seeing a fair bit of in coming years because we plan to get back to Tasmania as often as we possibly can. We love it. Anyway, until next time, this is Starlo wishing you tight lines.